Hello and welcome to Keys yeah. News. I'm Maddie Hannant. Hello and welcome to Keys News. I'm Maddie Hannant. And I'm Kimberly Brown. There's been some unwelcome job news in the past few hours. Toys R Us and Maplin are both entering into administration, seriously affecting the North West. Toys R Us employs around 140 people in the region. Both Maplin and the UK's biggest toy store combined have over 15 shops in Manchester and the surrounding areas. Wilf Reeve has more on the national collapse. In the space of an hour, two major UK retailers both announced that they were entering into administration. Firstly, Toys R Us. They have 100 stores across the UK and employ around 3,000 people. They've been unable to find a buyer over the past several months and have now called in administrators to begin a winding up process. Stores will remain open, but all online uh, services will cease from today. Now, they owed £15 million in a VAT bill that was due today, which was believed to have tipped them over the edge. Secondly, uh, Maplin, the electrical goods chain, now, they have 200 stores and employ 2,500 people. Their CEO has blamed a slump in the pound after the Brexit vote, as well as a weak customer environment. Now, with 6,000 jobs put at risk by these announcements, it shows the changing face of the British high street and the inability to compete with huge online giants. Lecturers across the country were not put off from a second week of strikes despite the wintry conditions. The action is over a dispute in pensions. The university and college union claims that some lecturers will be £10,000 a year worse off. Universities UK said the pension scheme has said there is a £6 billion deficit that can't be ignored. A petition launched by students has called for their fees to be reimbursed for lost tuition time. On a picket in Salford, staff have found students to be very supportive. I kind of think that students want to be educated by the very best, by the very best, you know. And I think we have some very, very, very good academics here at Salford and support staff as well. And I think they recognise that in order to get the very best, you have to reward people, really. And that's where the pension comes in. The beast. The beast from the east has struck Greater Manchester as well as the rest of the UK. Although it looks pretty, it has caused major travel disruption with many northern rail trains cancelled. There are also delays on motorways and drivers have been warned to leave extra time when commuting. Dozens of schools have shut and firefighters have been called to help residents get out of their houses. So take a leaf out of this dog's book and wrap up warm this week. We'll be giving you a full weather forecast at the end of the programme. Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, has called for the north of England to have a permanent seat at the table in Brexit negotiations. Accusing ministers of prioritising the city of London over the regions, he wants to make sure the northern powerhouse doesn't get neglected. Richard Griffiths reports from an expo for the creative industries being held in Manchester today. Yes, it may be snowing outside, but I'm here in Event City for Prolific North Live, the biggest creative industries expo outside of London, where businesses are determined that the economic bus will still stop. We all had lots of fears um, in, in changes of government and Brexit and things that might happen and how that might look. But certainly the, the atmosphere is buoyant at the moment, I think. If a lot of taxes are, uh, are added to us importing our, our, our wines that we import, it it could be it could be terrible but we don't think like that because at the end of the day we're buying from them so they're gonna to have to make it cost effective for us to be able to purchase these products increasingly we're getting more uh, interest from London companies as well who know that the much of their revenue comes out of London but they know they have to spend and invest in the regions and Manchester fortunately seems to be 
an increasingly popular destination. Yes, it may be winter, but the businesses of the north are gathering and they're determined to ensure that the throne of economy does not stay in the south. This game is far from over. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Richard. Now, talking of Northern Powerhouses, Helen is here with news of an exciting summer of events coming up in Manchester. Thank you, ladies. Yes, there's definitely a lot going on this summer. Big news for Rolling Stones fans. The legendary band has announced a UK tour and will pay a visit to Manchester's Old Trafford on the 5th of June. They last played in the UK five years ago when they headlined the Pyramid Stage at Glastonbury. Tickets go on sale on the 2nd of March. Another big name to feature at a different Old Trafford this time is Usain Bolt. The Jamaican Olympic sprinter has revealed he's to make his footballing debut at the United Ground for the Celebrity Soccer Aid team on the 10th of June. Bolt will captain the rest of the world team, rivalling Robbie Williams's England side, and has made no secret of his dream to try professional football when the 31-year-old's running career ends. He will join a long list of celebrities such as Will Ferrell and the One Direction Boys. Soccer Aid formed 12 years ago and has so far raised 24 million for UNICEF. Tickets range, tickets range from 10 to 15 pounds. Now, Josh Widdicombe, Rod Gilbert and Johnny Vegas, all winners of the Leicester Mercury Comedian of the Year Award. And the latest to join them is one of our own. In the final, the University of Salford's Jack Gleedow beat seven other wannabe stand-ups to the prize. Ellen Milligan went to meet him. Hiya. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'm the bad boy your mother warned you about. <laughs> That's what my mum used to say. <laughs> it's such a prestigious competition with everyone that's been in it before that just to be within them names, it's really good. How does it feel to follow in the footsteps of like Josh Whitaker and Rod Gilbert? Well, I've still got to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still got a long way to go, um, but to be amongst those names, yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. So what made you want to be a comedian? I like making people laugh and I, I've always been the centre of attention. I, like, I love being the centre of attention in crowds and going out for drinks with my mates. I like, I like just having a laugh. So, And there's a lot of bad stuff in the world and politics and stuff that I don't really understand. I just think it's good if we can all have a laugh at something silly. And what is your favourite sketch which you've performed? Probably the scooter. The thing I do with the scooter, that's my... Because it's so different from anything else I've, I've seen before. But, and I still don't know how I came up with it. It was just one night, I couldn't get to sleep, and then my brain went, oh, there you go. And I'm like, it's a weird thing to think of. <laughs> Has it been inspiring to be at the same uni where Peter Kay and Sean Gibson came from? Yeah, like I didn't know that before I came here actually. Um, but there's quite a lot of comedians that are on the circuit as well that have come to Salford, so it must be something about this university that's got some funny bones in it somewhere here. Uh, this is called the Asthmatic Pampires. <laughs> <laughs> and we all don't know where this is going now, do we? <laughs> Now you only need to glance out of your window to know that it's pretty cold outside this week. Emily Henderson reports from Salford with a full weather update. So the beast of the east has well and truly hit this week with temperatures in Salford reaching minus 5 degrees leaving more and more commuters struggling to get to work. And if you think that's the worst of the bad weather, think again. Temperatures tonight will be bitterly cold reaching minus 3 degrees and windy weather tomorrow will make it feel colder than it really is. And from Friday, we're due more disruption and more snow with the arrival of Storm Emma. 
it will sweep a huge volume of moisture in from the Atlantic, bringing the worst freezing climate for years. So be sure to wrap up and stay indoors if possible. That's all from us at Keys News. Goodbye. Goodbye.